Welcome back to my four part mini series on how to manage form state in React. Previously, we've touched upon the, the standard JavaScript way, sort of using nothing that React would provide. Then we've tackled what would be the idiomatic way with standard tools from React, and that can be a bit verbose. And I promised you that right now I would introduce something that would take that verbosity away and um, introduce a couple of new cool features that we might want in our form. For this, we're using Redux form, and I've labeled this for the longest time the best way to manage form states. So I'm kind of already indicating here that there might be a better solution by now, but I've actually used Redux form myself for a very, very long time, and I was very happy with it. So let's move to our standard form here. Again, as always, it doesn't have anything implemented. It's just this standard empty form here. With Redux form, there's a bit of a central setup required. So a Redux form uses, as the name implies, Redux to manage its state. This video is not about what Redux is, so if you're interested in that, um, please leave a, a comment. If you don't know what Redux is, it doesn't really matter so much for this um, video. Just know that you have to set Redux up in your app and that Redux is a place to uh, store app-wide state. So I've already set Redux up in the background and also you need to introduce a reducer. A reducer is a part of uh, Redux um, that can uh, reduce state. And here's the, the Redux, docu Redux form documentation of how to set that up. Um, basically you have to introduce this form reducer into your reducers. I've already done that so we can focus on the fun part which is building our form. The first thing you have to do when um, uh, working with Redux form is introduce the Redux form higher order component. So from Redux form, and that's a bit too much form here. This form should actually be from. Okay, so a higher order component, that's really a React way of saying a higher order function, or it's the concept of higher order function applied to a component. If you don't know what higher order functions are, they're a concept of functional programming, please let me know, um, write that in the comments. I'm very, very happy to create uh, videos on that in detail. But for now, all that we have to know is that this higher order component basically is a React component that takes in a component and returns another component. And it, while doing that, it enriches it with a, a couple of uh, props in this case. So really it's it's a, a composition pattern rather than an, inher an inheritance pattern. And uh, that is very useful here because we can do this at the level of our export here. So wrapping our own component in this Redux form and then you call it once where you apply um, your configuration. Oh, sorry, that was not intended. Uh, where you apply your configuration and then you call it again with your uh, component. So the configuration that we wanna put in here, something that's required is the form name. So this is a requirement from Redux form. We have to give our form a unique name. So let's call it my customer registration form really doesn't matter. So ideally, now our form should still be here. Okay, cool. But we haven't done anything Redux for me as of yet. Redux form tries to enhance your individual input components. And for that, there is a component called field that we can import. So we're basically replacing our own input with a Redux form field. And then the field works very similar. So it needs a name as well. So Redux form also uses the name of the field to um, identify um, the, the state that belongs to this particular field. So let's add that. But also what we need is a component. And here we need to build a small helper component, which we'll call render input. So let's move our existing component out of here and create a new component that we call render input. And then render input for now just has a couple of props that we don't really care about. And it returns our input. So we can remove the name and we can remove the ID. And now we want to pass through a couple of props. So this is um, Redux form specific. We get input props here that we can spread out onto uh, our component. And what we would have in there are all these handlers like on change, on submit, on blur, these kind of things, as well as the um, value field also. So internally here, we're still using a controlled component as in the previous video, but Redux form is doing this for us. Okay, so let's give this a shot. Let's see, I think this could work already. Let's see. Um, 
Okay, cool. Okay, we can enter stuff into our field, so that's good. But we didn't win anything yet because we're not doing anything with our form. So the first thing that we've always done on our form is um, do something with the values on submit. So for this Redux form, so I said that the higher order function injects new props into our component. So our component here now magically gets a prop that's called handle submit. And this is coming from Redux form. And this we need to pass onto our form. So form on submit equals handle submit. Cool. So um, now that we have that, Redux form is able to, to uh, handle our form submit. And we can put our own submit method on here as well. So we can here say on submit. And let's just create our own on submit function here. So on submit, this function is being passed a couple of values. And then for these um, values, let's use our alert again and maybe do a json.stringify on the values. And that's our submit handler. Unexpected token because I'm missing the closing parentheses here. Cool. Okay, let's give it a shot. So my best customer ID, submit, customer ID, my best customer ID. Cool. Notice that we're not running into this hard uh, page reload issue here. So Redux form with its internal handle submit method here already uh, calls the event.prevent default. So we don't have to do that manually anymore. Okay, so uh, that's a very basic form, but of course a Redux form has much more to offer. We started seeing the benefits of controlled forms in the previous video once we added a validation. So we can do the same here, of course. So let's add a validator that's called required. And this validator takes a value commonly abbreviated with uh, just V. And then we're saying if the value, actually if the value is undefined or the value is an empty string, then we can return an error message. So in this case, let's say this field is required. And otherwise we return undefined. So yes, it's actually undefined. It's not null or an empty string is actually undefined. And of course we would have an implicit undefined return. We don't have to write this, but just to, um, yeah, to make it obvious. Cool. So now that we have our own validator, we can pass that into our function here. So we can say validate equals required. Notice I'm passing in the function. I'm not calling the function and passing in the result. I'm passing in the function so that Redux form can call this function whenever we change um, something that we type into the field. Okay, cool. So now we have a validator, but we're not doing anything with it yet. So we can again use um, what we did before on our button. So we could say our button is disabled whenever our form is not valid. And where do we get valid from? Before we had to construct this manually. Now we don't. We can just get this out of our props. So this is really cool. Okay, let's see if it works. So, ha, huh, it seems to work because our button is grayed out by default. Let's type something cool and our form is usable. Okay, but we also had this error message before. So where, where can we get this error message back if we have this um, custom input component up here that can take an error message? We can, we can refactor this a bit. Let's maybe not call this just props, but let's destructure them right away. And here we have input and there's also something called meta. So here we can remove this now. And now we can say meta. So here we can put our error message prop that we had before. And here we can simply put meta dot error. Let's see what happens. Ah, the field is required. Cool. It's here. Cool. So one of the criticism of our own implementation of the previous video was that why would the user get this message if they haven't even started filling out the form yet? Like it would be better if they only actually forget to fill out this form and then see the error message. And that would have been quite complex before, but now with Redux form, this is actually very, very easy. So in this meta prop, we also get other props. So we can just say meta.touch. So has the user touched this field? And if so, let's show the error message. Cool. So, okay, no error message is shown by default. Nevertheless, our form is still invalid. If we click in here, click out again. So touched basically happens when you blur the field again. And now we're seeing this field is required. In real life, you might not just have um, one validator, which is required. 
Let's also put an arbitrary second validation function here. So let's say allowed names or something. And here we have if the value is forbidden name, then we can say something like forbidden name is not a valid customer ID, something like this. Cool. So all we have to do is take our validate here where we have um, this required before. We just wrap this in an array. And now the second element of our array is allowed names. Let's get back to our form. This field is still required, but what happens if we put in forbidden name? Aha, uh -huh, forbidden name is not a valid customer ID. And again, our form uh, button is gray because our form is invalid. So this was just a subset of the cool things you can do with Redux form. There's plenty more, go check out the documentation. However, I said in the beginning, for the longest time, this was the best way, but it's possibly not anymore. And this is a good segue to our conclusions page. I'll explain this um, in a second. But let's see, why would we want to use Redux form? So there's much less repetition. Of course, there's a bit of boilerplate as well, but as the form grows bigger, much, much less repetition. It's very easy to manage validators, as you saw, especially if you compose many validators together. That wasn't really a problem. So um, you get a lot of interesting states. So um, this touch, valid, these kind of things that we had to um, build ourselves before. You get them for free and you get them injected in sort of the right places. So it makes use of higher order components and does that really well, which I would say is a very idiomatic React thing as well. Also, the API in general is just really good for Redux form. I think it makes sense. and um, yeah, it's, it's nice to use. However, there are a few disadvantages. So it has a sort of unnecessary dependency on Redux. If you don't use Redux in your app, you might have to introduce Redux just for Redux form. So that's kind of hmm, not, the, not the best way in 2019 maybe. Two or three years ago, Redux was everywhere and was kind of given that uh, you had Redux in your app, but um, we've grown out of Redux a bit. So this might not be the case anymore. And actually Redux is not the best place. I said before that Redux is a way to centralize your entire app wide state, but why would you centralize your uh, local form state? So a form is very specific to one page, to one view. And it, in there, you don't really care if the rest of your app has access to that particular form state. It'll probably be gone anyway once you submitted it or, or close this. So uh, not just is, is it an unnecessary dependency on Redux, Redux is actually not the best way to store this kind of state. But luckily there is Final Form, which is from the same creator. It's also from Eric Rasmussen who built um, Redux Form as well. And Final Form does not have a dependency on uh, Redux Form. So watch out for, if you, if you liked this Redux form here, watch out for video four, where we tackle final form. And this is also my recommendation of what to use instead. If for whatever reason you can't use um, final form, but you have complex form requiring a, a lot of validation, then Redux form is really, really a good tool. As I said before, I've used it for the longest time myself, and I was really happy with it. So that's it for part three out of four. See you next time when we talk about final form and I promise you, you'll recognize a lot of the patterns in there because it's very similar in its API to Redux form, but takes away this whole Redux dependency. So it's really a cool form tool. See you then.